Can you tell us a little bit about this character and what this film has to say about some very complex and universal social issues? Yeah, I definitely can say that. I mean, I think that this film deals with really issues of class. And it has these three interweaving stories that through different points of view show you the different experiences that you can have within the same story if you're just from different socioeconomic classes. Uh, and that's a big thing that drew me to this movie because it seems to be such a pervasive issue that America doesn't really know how to talk about, doesn't really know how to address. Um, you know, we kind of code it over with capitalism and uh, don't deal with what, what is, are the real issues and the way that those issues impact people in this so differently. And so that was a big draw for me. And my character is kind of a voyeur and is learning throughout the whole movie. She's learning about different people, about her own relationship, her own being part of the problem or part of the solution. And, and uh, so I think that I hope that people can see the movie and see through her eyes and, and get to kind of learn and experience the story through her. That would be my dream. Talking about representation on screen, I think for so many people, your character's journey on Stranger Things had a significance that went even just beyond the great show that it is. Can you talk about what that means to you and what you're hoping for next season and hopefully more amazing uh, combination with you and Joe? Thank you. I hope so too. I love working with Joe. Um, I guess I'd say that I'm, I'm really glad that um, the Stranger Things is making the choices that they're making. I think it's really important to have diver diversity on mainstream television shows, on big Netflix shows, on Marvel movies, because that's the way that you get into the living rooms all across America and all across the world. And if I can be even a little bit a part of that, it's a huge honor. So I'm really grateful to the Duffer Brothers and I'm really grateful to Stranger Things. And thank you so much. You know, my parents gave me acting tips by showing me what it means to be a good collaborator and a good worker and um, a caring actor and participant in the creative agency for their whole careers in life. And so that is super lucky. And um, this year has been unbelievable. I've gotten to work with people I really respect and I've learned a lot from, and it's just been a huge honor. So. And now you you said it was your first time at TIFF, you're working yes. the uh, red carpet. Yes. How do you feel uh, confident on the red carpet because you look so beautiful? Oh, thank you so much. I feel I feel a little tippy in my shoes, but my people who are here and the friends and that I have surrounding me and supporting me, I feel as good as you could possibly feel in this beautiful city on this beautiful day. <laughs> and you're also... Uh, you I've used social media to put out messages. Um, I've been using social media to promote my music. Um, I've been using it to, uh, I, I don't know, try to introduce myself as a person and have sort of some control over my own narrative, but I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out social media. It's not really my uh, cup of tea, but it's really important in today's day and age. So, thank you. Uh, I play a guy named Drew, who's a, a, a middle-class uh, real estate broker guy who wants to jump uh, his station in life and uh, make an investment that he can't afford in a hedge fund. Uh, as you can probably imagine, things don't go too well. And I think the human drama in this story is underpinned by some pretty universal socioeconomic themes. I'm curious what you think the film has to say about those very complex and, and quite impactful issues. You know, class uh, typically has been something that we talk about in Europe, in the rest of the world, not really in America. But I think as the income gap has increased in this country and people have chosen to identify with income and money and social status, um, it's become more and more of an issue in America. Uh, and I think Oren did a really beautiful job of uh, articulating that. I think the, the, the book does that as well and the first film did that as well. But it, it's a subject that I think is more and more relevant uh, in this country. Talking about a beautiful job, obviously um, you have an amazing cast alongside you. Can you talk a little bit about, I guess, particularly your dynamic with Peter and also with Maya because they're, they're very important components of this human drama? Well, Peter and I are old friends, so it was really nice to work with him. Um, I think, you know, for me, that's, you know, 90% of working with an actor is developing some kind of chemistry and some kind of trust and feeling of security and knowing that you can do anything and they're going to respond and support. And 
we just found that very quickly with both of them. Uh, I think Maya's extraordinary, really lovely, lovely, talented, wonderful person. It was a, it was a lot of fun. Well, just the way that the story was going to be told, that it was um, going to have different points of view on this one incident and that you were going to really fully get into every one of those points of view and not just the ones that we as a society romanticize more or revile more. And so um, that, it reminded me of like movies like, um, you know, Shortcuts in a Way or something like that, you know. I think beneath the human drama here in, in an intimate family setting, we've also got a lot of socio-political themes. I'm curious as an artist, as a storyteller, how important you think it is to explore those things? I mean, it's what's on everyone's mind all the time if you don't explore those things. I, look, I, I think there are a couple of different options. There is so much news-wise going on all the time that it's difficult for fiction to be heard because the news feels day-to-day -day white knuckle. So in order to m be making content that interests people, it can either be complete escapist stuff, which is completely valid also right now. People need to blow their brains out. <laughs> and then, or something that has something to do with what they're seeing and what's around them, maybe a different idea about it. And I think that's what this is. For people who haven't been lucky enough to see the film yet, can you tell us just more specifically about your role and where you fit into this drama? I play Quint, who's somebody who's in the, you know, top 0.01% of wealth. And um, I am, uh, my wife is played by Marissa Tomei, and um, she basically, I have a relationship with Liev where he's invested in my fund. And so that goes where funds go, which is high and low. It's my final question, just very quickly. Um, you're playing someone in that upper echelon. I'm curious if there were particular reference points that you drew upon in terms of real life figures in that community or if it was just... I, yeah, I mean, I've known people, the wealthiest people, some of the wealthiest people in the world. I've met them um, and it's a complicated thing. Well, you know, I think in the end, capitalism destroys everyone in different ways. <laughs> I play his very nurturing pregnant wife who is also a therapist and is also um, yeah she's just like the sort of moral compass of the story and she really cares about people and helping people so yeah talking about a moral compass can you talk about some of the themes that this story explores because beyond just being about a family drama and a family uh, tragedy there's a lot more going on socio-politically in this story. Sure, yeah, you've got some social upward climbing happening socioeconomically, um, which, you know, we find a lot in this country and we also find how that doesn't always work. And, you know, there's themes of love, young teenage love, and between people of different socioeconomic statuses as well, so... Yeah, it's without giving too much away. <laughs> there are some pretty hard uh, themes to to uh, observe. Can you tell us a little bit about this character and what you think this has to this film has to say about some very complex socioeconomic issues? Hey, can I have one question? That's a really long, complicated question. Um, uh, well, what I'll have to say, what I'll say is I'll speak just on. Ian is a complicated kid um, who's had a really troubled past and he's, he's doing the best he can um, and he has this thick opaque coat of um, being kind of subversive and quiet and uh, trying to use his silence and I think in some ways a manipulation and getting women interested and getting people to maybe uh, worship him because you know the silent person always gets a lot of attention. Um, but then when things fall apart for him you see that it's just this scared little boy flailing around. Um, and that gap, that journey between those two things was super exciting for me and super interesting and um, I had so much meat to chew on between the book and between the Italian film but I felt that um, I had to really make it my own and honor Oren Moverman's script first and foremost um, and honor Mark Myers, the director. Mark, can you start by talking a little bit about um, 
the important themes that human capital really is touching upon and what it was as a storyteller that most resonated with you about this book when you first uh, discovered it? Well, when I was given the screenplay, it's divided up into these three chapters of following a middle-class real estate broker played by Lee F. Schreiber, the wealthy wife of a hedge fund owner played by Marissa Tomei and her husband's played by Peter Sarsgaard. And then Maya Hawk plays Lee F. Schreiber's daughter and she falls in love with a guy from the other side of the tracks. So you have these three class systems that are explored in the film. And, and that was a, a, the separation of American class between rich to lower class is something that is just a very unique thing to explore. And I thought those themes and everything behind it about capitalism and the human nature that's explored in all these emotions and getting to know people. The, the, the big thing, I, to clarify it also, you don't really know what's going on in someone's life and to so deeply investigate what's going on in someone's life and then see that as a peripheral person in someone else's journey is a really interesting fun way to do a movie. I mean obviously you mentioned that um, just a few of the fantastic people you've assembled in this cast I guess I mean starting with Maya I mean, she's such an exciting young actress can you talk a little bit about the qualities that, that, that she has that made her the right fit for this role and you think such a very special storyteller herself? Well, she's full of joy, love, passion. Um, she's a very instinctive actress. She goes in with a lot of courage and faith. And there are a lot of things that she'd never explored before as a young actress that were here in this film. So I knew that she had some, she had a personal connection to this character. She related to her. And it was very exciting to sort of see her do this work because we obviously know that she's gonna go on to huge things to follow. Of course, um, Peter and Liev are, are both very well established for good reason. Can you talk a little bit about both of their characters, really, and again, just sort of what we can expect from their performance. Liev and uh, Peter Sarsgaard, and they all have their own unique process, the way in which they work, and that was a thrilling thing. I think that all of them give... I'm very, very proud of their performances. I'll leave it to somebody else to declare that I think it's some of their great, greatest work. And... To collaborate with them has been a huge, tremendous honor. I'm curious, what does it mean for you to be part of TIFF, specifically this unique celebration of cinema? Look, I've made some independent films when I started out that were shared in regional film festivals where the audience sat in folding chairs in a church and watched your movie. So to be, to be reached at this point and share my film on such a large stage is a tremendous, tremendous honor. It is a movie that's from now on meant to be taken wherever it's supposed to travel. And this is just, I'm, I'm blessed and very fortunate that it's first starting here at TIFF. I guess when an audience both here in TIFF and around the world sees the film, class is quite a universal struggle, a universal issue. What are you most hoping overall an audience takes away from the film when they walk out the end of the cinema? I think there's a lot of social political issues that someone can process afterwards, but also that there's a, an ability for us to realize and recognize that we never really know what someone else is going through. And I think it's hard for us to relate to someone from another class. And that separation of class is also part of the shape and form and the meaning of this film. And for us to have a deeper empathy to all of these characters from all walks of life, it's just a, it would make the world a better place. Um, the, it's a novel I wrote in 2003, and really it's about a, uh, a real estate agent who isn't doing too well, and he invests in a, unwisely invests in a hedge fund because he wants to be part of the big, um, the big boom in the financial markets. And he makes a huge mistake. He, he bets too much money and winds up in a terrible situation. And what happens then is there's a conflict between him and the rich hedge fund manager. Their children get involved, everybody gets involved, and it really is, becomes a parable about greed and money and aspiration in, in, in America. And, I mean, obviously those are universal themes. Can you talk a little bit about why you think it's so important to explore them on screen in the way that this film now does? I, I just think it's something that, that continually comes up in America and throughout the world. I mean, you know, this film was made first in Italy in 2013. There's an Italian adaptation of it, and now we have Mark Meyer's uh, adaptation now. I just think it speaks to some eternal themes in people and to eternal desires to be rich, to be comfortable, to look after your kids. And what are you willing to risk to do to take part in the, uh, in, in the great wealth of the world? 
And can you talk about having such fantastic partners to bring this to life on screen, both in Mark as a director and this astonishing cast he's assembled? It's, I feel like the luckiest man in the world. I mean, uh, Mark Myers is a writer, is a director I really uh, I, I, I love during, that's him, uh, from my friend Dahmer. Oren Moverman, the, the screenwriter, is somebody I've respected for years. And the cast is unbelievable. I mean, Lev Schreiber, Marissa Tomei, Maya Wolf, uh, I mean, excuse me, Maya Hawk, Alex Wolf. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just quite remarkable. And when an audience gets a chance to see the film here at TIFF and beyond, what are you most hoping overall they take away from the experience when they walk out of that cinema? I think they have to understand what, what is the capital in their lives. What is important? Is it wealth? Is, is it ostentation? Or is it your family? Is, is it the people close to you? And that was really the message of the book is, you know, there's a man who actually gambles his, his children for something that, that actually may end up harming them. And I think people should maybe come out and think what, what, they, what their priorities really are. I'm curious, is there a particular moment, either in the original book or on screen now, that you think really captures that sentiment most profoundly? Yeah, I, I think there's a moment when, um, you know, when, when the, the markets start to collapse and it turns out the rich man is actually going to make money off the markets collapsing and the poor man is going to be destroyed by it. And I think in a way that sort of speaks to the fact that, you know, the rich are always going to figure out a way to win and the poor are, always, are never going to be able to figure out a way to win. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!